You uh, polled Senator Whitehouse versus the Republican challenger, Barry Hinckley. What is uh, the gap here on this one? Well, the gap on this race right now stands about 22 points. We have um, Sheldon Whitehouse receiving 50% of the vote, uh, Barry Hinckley receiving 28% of the vote, and we have another 20% of the voters not sure on this race. So right now, Sheldon Whitehouse is that magical number of 50%. He's where he has to be in order to win re-election. Um, I think he has a big advantage to the fact that his campaign war chest is huge compared to Barry Hinckley's. Uh, and I have to believe that a lot of the vote that Barry Hinckley's getting at this time are voters who, are disinf who really have a problem with Sheldon Whitehouse, that they don't like him, and that's why they're voting for the Republican. Because uh, I don't think Barry Hinckley at this time is a household name in the state of Rhode Island. That's interesting. So job performance, jumping ahead a little bit, job, but job performance numbers for Senator Whitehouse, they're not uh, translating into the the matchup between him and Barry Hinckley. No, he only gets a 38% positive job rating in our poll, which is about 5% higher than he did back in 2010, that January poll. So he's trending in the right direction. So but, if they don't like him, why are they going to vote for him? Well, first of all, they don't know who his opponent is, because I don't think Barry Hinckley is well known at this time. Uh, and the other thing is Sheldon Whitehouse is getting 75% of the Democratic vote in the state of Rhode Island. The Democrats are staying with him. They're supporting him big time. He's winning among the senior citizens. He's getting their votes. So he's getting key groups that he has to, to support him. So they may not be overwhelming in love with Sheldon Whitehouse job, but they think he's doing okay. There's no controversy that would bring his numbers down, where with Davis Cicilline, we saw a controversy that does bring his numbers down. There's and a big difference right there. And of course, the big number in the Hinckley White House race is not the poll, but the purse. The purse, there's no question. Sheldon Whitehouse has over $3 million. Uh, Barry Hinckley is maybe $300,000, $500,000. You're really outgunned that way. White House can get his message out through the media with the paid ads very strongly. Hinckley needs to latch on to something to give his campaign some momentum. It's still very early. I'm sure he would be encouraged by having 28% of the vote at this point, but he needs to raise money in order to be competitive in this race. Down to job performance, uh, Senator Whitehouse, how does he stack up against the rest of the delegation? Well, against the rest of the delegation, um, not, as, not as well as Jack Reed or, or Jim Langevin. He's receiving a 38% positive job rating, a 53% negative job rating. That's compared to 33.57 back in 2010. So he's moved up slightly. Uh, he's holding his own. Again, he does well with Democrats. A majority of Democrats give him a positive job rating. That reflected in the vote the Democrats were giving him. He's still having some problems with seniors, 40 to 56% job rating but it's a little bit better than his overall job rating. Um, does fairly well with females. Uh, he has a 40% positive, a 49% negative, where among uh, males, he has a 58% negative job rating. What are his poor numbers, again, the people who outright don't think he's doing 20, a good job? 24%. Okay. Um, the big winner in uh, job performance is General Treasurer Gina Raimondo. She leads the pack. I'm wondering, though, uh, how she did with union households, considering that sweeping pension reform that she spearheaded. Well, she did quite well with union members. Um, she received a 47% positive job rating to a 35% negative job rating. With so, union households? With union households. 20% uh, of our sample study were union members or someone in their family was. And again, it's not a overwhelming where her top number was 56% statewide. Among union members, 47%. If I'm Gina Raimondo, after everything that's just happened, I'm pretty happy with that number. Does it surprise you? It surprises me a little bit, but at the same time, I think when she ran for office, I think the unions knew that she was going to do something with the pensions, that she wasn't going to just let it continue the way it was. She never told the unions, I will not do pension reform. She said, we have to make changes. We're going to address those needs in the um, 2011 year. So it's, it's surprising me that there's still 47%. But again, all union members we poll are not public sector employees. Some of them are private sector employees who may view this totally differently than a public sector employee. So that's another reason why her numbers could be a little bit better. Um, how, what is her, uh, the, the numbers on people who aren't sure how they feel about her job performance? And do you think that reflects overall they're not sure about her job performance or they don't know who she is? Well, there's 19% who say they don't know her well enough to give an opinion on this. For the offices she's in, that's very good. Because if you took the lieutenant governor, secretary of state, attorney general, that not sure number would probably be about in the 30 or 40% range. So for a general treasurer to have only 19% of the people not knowing her, or 81% knowing her, that's very good. Also keep in mind, she's only been in office 14 months. So she's still fairly new at this. 
Uh, so it's a very good name recognition for somebody who just got involved. Governor Lincoln Chafee, uh, <sighs> wow. Yeah, his, his numbers are down and they're way down. Only 21% give him a positive job rating. 75% give him a negative job rating. But what stands out, 48% give him a poor job rating. So almost half the residents of the state of Rhode Island say he's doing a poor job. These are very, very bad numbers for the governor. Of course, his office is going to say he's a, a victim of the economy and a, a high unemployment. Well, I mean, I think it's more than that. Um, I think just people are not grasping on to what he's doing in the state of Rhode Island at this time. Uh, he had, he won the election with 36, 37 percent of the vote, and now his job rating is lower than that. So he's lost a lot of the support that he had to start with. Do you think he has a message problem? Well, I think the problem is, I don't think the voters really know where he is on certain issues. I'll give you an example. He told the unions, I would support binding arbitration. Yet after it came out of the Senate, he sort of said, well, I don't know if I'm going to support that or not. He, told, he implied that he was going to you know, work for moderate type pension reforms, and now, now he went to strong pension reforms. I think there the unions said, wait a minute, we didn't expect this. We, we expected the governor to go a different way, and he loses that support. How, how did he do with the unions then? Very poor. 20% favorable job rating, 80% unfavorable job rating. Now, now we, got, we have two years, he has two years before the next election, right. but that has to be a big concern for the governor because uh, he has no ground game. He, he's no. an independent, he doesn't have party support, mm -hmm. and who supported him in the last election yeah. was the, the unions. The unions were a big time for him with a lot of money, a lot of bodies, a lot of organization. It seems right now they have totally turned their back on him, and he needed those unions. Now, he has two years, but it's going to be very difficult after what he's done last year to get the union support back. Not impossible. But it's going to be very difficult for him. Um, so is he seeing support anywhere? Uh, right now, believe it or not, his greatest support comes from Democrats. 31% gave him a positive job rating compared to 63%. 31%, of course, relatively speaking, is support. Yeah. <laughs> compared to the 20% statewide, among Democrats, that's his biggest group of support. That's why you hear people saying, gee, maybe you should become a Democrat. He's already endorsed Shell in the White House. He's a co-chairman of the Obama campaign. I mean, he's doing a lot of Democratic-type things. And he's showing a little better support among Democrats. But overall, his numbers are just very poor. Um, let's talk about Jack Reed briefly here. Um, it doesn't seem, if you could compare this poll to the January 2010 poll that, that we uh, took a look at, it doesn't seem he's been able to move the needle too much. No, he hasn't moved the needle much at all. He had, I think, about a 56% positive in January on 2010. Here we're at 53% positive, 40% negative. Again, I think it's a whole thing that reflects back to Congress. Years ago, Jack Reed's numbers would be in the 60s, maybe even the low 70s at a good time. But the numbers for everybody are down at this point. And all the polling data that you look at shows everybody's numbers down. The voters are very skeptical about Congress. Um, they don't see anything getting done down in Washington, and they just see total gridlock. And I think in turn, that's reflecting on everybody. How about the president? The president's numbers, again, for a Democratic state, his numbers are not good. He has a 43% positive job rating and a 55% negative job rating in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, not good numbers running for re-election. However, I would suspect that as the campaign gets closer, those numbers will improve as far as people voting for him due to the fact that the way they vote in Rhode Island is a very heavily Democratic state. And my guess is Obama will betray the Republican as very conservative, and that should help him Rhode Island. But he is still receiving 65% of the Democratic support in the state. So he has a good base with the Democrats. Well, how... How many people think he's outright doing a poor job as president? That's a 26% in this survey.